We're at a temporary reception center in Greece. There's barely any food, trash is everywhere. The conditions here are absolutely despicable. We spoke with Stuart Patrick, Senior Fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, about what it will take to solve the refugee crisis. When we're talking about uh, refugee crises, we talk about source countries, transit countries, and destination countries. And what we've seen recently is Europe's effort to try to deal with this at, at, at the destination, at the final stage. And right now, people are simply being warehoused too often in refugee camps with no sense of hope, no education for their children, and no hope for the future. They just were simply overwhelmed by the sheer numbers of people who are showing up. There's a real gap between what the moral aspirations of the world are and how people are actually being treated. But these harsh conditions haven't slowed the tide of desperate refugees. In 2015, over one million refugees arrived in Europe all seeking safety and a new home. We caught up with Ammar, a Syrian refugee, and joined him for his fifth attempt at crossing the border between Greece and Macedonia. Yeah. <laughs> يعني في ناس منا ما بيحبوا إنه يساووا الشغلة إنه العالم يكرهوا نطلع ما عم نطلع منا البني آدم شو شبه Looking forward, I think we can anticipate that these sorts of mass movements of people are the wave of the future. So a lot of people have said we need to update the major conventions that deal with humanitarian catastrophes because we just don't have the conceptual or legal framework to deal with what's coming down the pike. The paradox that human beings in particular are the ones that are constrained from free movement while everything else gets to move is I think going to get sharper and sharper and it's going to contribute to some major tensions around the world.